The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. I'm Deacon Kevin Sartorius. I'm uh, the director of Catholic Charities, and uh, we're blessed to have Mary Martha as a part of uh, the Catholic Charities family. Of course, it came uh, to us through uh, St. John and St. James and the wonderful volunteers who make it work. Uh, so really, uh, we just kind of steward it and let it be what it is, because it's already something wonderful. I'm thankful to be here today. I know Father John is gone, uh, but we uh, have had a great, uh, a great weekend here with Father Carlos and uh, with um, Deacon Charlie and, uh, and I. And then I've gone over to St. James for the Masses there as well. So I've been back and forth uh, these last uh, couple of hours. I am uh, wanting to talk with you about our gospel today. Uh, in Matthew, it starts off with a simple sentence that just kind of uh, lays the groundwork, but I think we shouldn't pass by it. It says, on that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Okay, well, uh, Jesus, let's say he grew up in Nazareth and was obedient to his parents, but he got old enough that uh, it was time to head out and, and do his own thing. Uh, so he left Nazareth and went up the road uh, to the Sea of Galilee, a little town uh, called Capernaum. And uh, he started making friends there, as you would do in a new town. Uh, so it was uh, Peter and Andrew and James and John and, you know, the list, right? The apostles started to gather around Jesus, and they would meet at Peter's house and sit and talk. Uh, they would... Uh, go back and forth and, and learn from him. All that the Father had uh, prepared, uh, Jesus was passing on to the apostles. As that happened, I think, uh, with the, you know, the lack of windows in that time and uh, the, probably the tight space of the village, people could hear him talking and they would gather around the house. And we know that it got so busy at one point that they were even trying to bring someone to be healed to him, couldn't find any way to get him into the house to Jesus, so they ripped off the roof and dropped him down in to Peter's house, right? Well, at this point, we know it's time, right? It's time to move out of the house and down to the, to the lake, down to the, the Sea of Galilee, and not just keep this message for the apostles or for those who happened by and heard but to give the message of the good news to everyone. And so on that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. He went into a boat and he sat down and they gathered around the shore and listened to him. I think it's significant even that he sat down and uh, was in the boat. Uh, the people would have been crushing in on him. They really wanted to hear, uh, to talk about, to debate perhaps even what he was saying. But he wasn't there to debate with them. Uh, he was there to sit down and show his authority. I am the teacher. I am the rabbi. Uh, I will speak to you and give you instruction. But I would like you to listen and to hear. And it ends with he who has ears ought to hear, right? 
Okay, so then he gets into the story, the parable of the sower, and he just throws the seed out there in his parable, and he gives us three ways by which the word is not heard. Uh, It will be in the thicket, it'll be on uh, shallow soil, or it'll be on the path, but it won't bear any fruit. And one way in which it, uh, through varying degrees, a hundred or sixty or thirty fold will bear fruit. And he's talking about his message. I'm coming out to the whole world now and I know that not everyone will be able to accept it. Uh, But for some it will be incredible. Just as it is for my friends back at Peter's house. They'll go out into the world and change it. They'll give their lives for it. It'll be something beautiful to watch. Even if it's hard to watch. So as I uh, look at that gospel reading and I try and apply it to myself, I find that some of it's easy and some of it's hard, honestly. I too, I I grew up uh, and then had to go out and find my own place. I uh, had to accept uh, what was given to me and use it for the best. I was baptized as as an infant. That's probably the case for most of you coming into the life in Christ, but maybe others Um, uh, through uh, your adult uh, choice uh, became Christians. In any case, when we were baptized, we were plunged down into the water or it was poured over us and we died to self. I'm no longer me because I come out of the waters of baptism alive in Christ. I am now a Christian, no longer me, but, but living in him. And because of that, I'm a little Christ, little less than a God, in fact. And so I have to practice. I have to go into my own home as a young person or as a spouse or as a father of seven, and I have to help them, help myself, learn about the message of Jesus Christ, about the good news that he was sent to tell uh, of his Father's grace and mercy and how he would intercede for us, how he would be present to us in the body, blood, soul, and divinity of the Eucharist, how he wanted to save us all. I could practice that in my house. It was, it was subdued. It was a little scary. It was uh, sometimes a conversation. But there came a time when I needed to move out of my own house and go out into the world with this message, with this good news. And boy, does that ever make it nerve-wracking, right? And so if you have practiced your faith in your home, God bless you. I think we're all ready, though, now, and many of us do on a regular basis, go out into the world to proclaim Jesus Christ. Now, if we went out onto Adams out here in front of the Civic Center with a big sandwich board and said, you know, the end is near and repent, that would probably fall into one of those first three ways, right? Uh, That's not probably going to be heard. It's not going to be accepted. It's not a means by which our culture will receive it. And so we probably should say, okay, let's cross that off the list before we ever even, you know, put letters uh, to the poster and not even go there. Instead, we're called uh, to probably a relational uh, gifting of God to other people. And so what I mean by that is we, we need to make a friend and we need to be a friend. And then we can bring that friend to Christ. Uh, we need to be filled with joy, with confidence in the grace that God gives us. And not push it on anyone uh, or uh, disrespect them in any way, but to lift them up and to love them. We do that at at Mary Martha Outreach, right? People come for groceries. Uh, They come for the fresh fruits and vegetables that are given to us uh, from Walmart. Uh, But then we give them more than food. Uh, We give them a smile. We say, thank you for coming. We say, "Don't, don't delay in coming back. We don't get all caught up in paperwork, uh, but we get caught up in relationship and in caring. When we go and do this in the right way, it will bear fruit. But if we get too conservative or closed in ourselves or uh, worried about being successful every time, it chokes it out. And so I can relate that in my own life to the garden that I have. I live south of Claremore in Inola, uh, Rogers County, and we have 20 acres. 
and uh, uh, plenty of land but not enough know-how to make it all work, right? Uh, we plant a garden every year and we would starve if we lived off of it, uh, but uh, it's still a good exercise for us. And so we get out there and we bump away with the rototiller because it's all dry and, and uh, try and get it all chopped up and then we hoe it to get it smaller and then we put it into furrows and then the kids uh, will say, go down there and poke holes, right? And the kids uh, poke a hole and it's not a half an inch, it's like an inch and a half, you know, it's too deep, uh, but that's their way. And then we'll go and drop one seed, one seed, one seed, each down the row and fill it up and maybe water it and then hope that it, it comes up and that the bugs don't get to it. Well, the challenge with that is uh, that it's, it's just so darn conservative. If it were to be, a, let's say it's a cucumber or a squash, we're probably going to grow that in a tray inside and then only pick the ones that really came up and plant three of them on the same hill because we think two of them probably won't make it, trying to get to the end. But in the, the gospel today, Jesus doesn't do it that way. Uh, I can't even imagine going and getting packets of seeds down at Lowe's and just throwing them in the yard, right? And just scattering them across. And yet that's how much he wants us to be gratuitous, to be vicarious, to just be crazy about it. Throw those seeds out there. Some of it's going to come up. The Father has a plan. He knows that there will be an abundant harvest in the end. It'll be a hundredfold what you planted, or maybe 60 or maybe 30. That's just different from the way I've ever been taught or how I've thought about it. And as a Catholic, I would say our prayer life, our faith life, we oftentimes see habit and it's very strong, but we hold it back and we don't just scatter it out there. But if we were to go down to Lowe's to buy those seed packets and walk in there and say, hey, where do you guys have the seeds? Uh, we can do that in two ways, right? We can do it joyfully. We can do it as a Christian. We can say, hey, I'm looking to plant a garden, and I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm wondering if you know where the seeds are. And when they tell you, there's just a simple, uh, God bless you, thank you so much, I'll go to aisle 36. Or when someone's in a conversation and you say amen at the end, or praise be Jesus Christ, holy cow, something as crazy as that, it gives people a, a, a means to react. It puts a smile on their face. It allows them to say, indeed, amen. Or maybe even, you know, my, my sister Susan, she's, she's got cancer. W would you pray for her? Okay, so now the seed is planted, right? That relationship that we have with that person leads to a relationship between me and a friend of mine, God, and this new friend that I've got. And I could even say, gulp, you know, holy cow, could I do this? Let's just pray for her right now. Oh, that would be so crazy for us, wouldn't it? Heavenly Father, we ask that you help Susan uh, during this hard time for her. And we ask that you help her friends and her relatives to persevere in their care and in their comfort of her. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Bam, right there in the middle of Lowe's. And all I was doing was going and buying seeds. And yet I was casting the good news. I was throwing the seeds of grace and mercy out into the world. Now it's fictitious. I didn't do it. I could do it. There's nothing holding me back from doing it. In fact, I'm called to be a fool for Christ, to really go out there and live it. And maybe, maybe three out of four times it won't have the result that I would hope for. That's the, what, what Jesus was telling us in the gospel, right? Three out of four times it's going to land on the path or in the thicket or in, in soil that's just not going to receive it. Maybe they'll look at me cross-eyed. Uh, well, in Romans, we heard in that second readings today uh, that we shouldn't regard, you know, the difficulties in this life to be of anything, uh, but to prepare ourselves for the glory in the life that is to come. If someone gives us maybe a cross-eyed look, just bring that peace back to yourself and go on to the next person and say, you know, gosh, here are all the seeds, and I don't know what the difference are between all these versions of tomatoes. Could you help me? Well, thank you so much. Blessed be God. I pray you have a great day. And see where that takes you. Cast more seeds, more seeds out there into the world. We receive Jesus here in the Eucharist. He is with us when we go out. In fact, we are Christ as Christians. 
and so we too can be the sowers of the seed. And I pray and I bless each of you uh, as you go out uh, into the world as Mass ends uh, to live this life. God bless you.